So, Odin, are you ready? Here is another question. This is by Al BM. I'm not going to say any more than that's his name. We'll leave it at that. But this is the question he asks. In the Quran, it refers to, oh, you trusted. People who can be trusted. Belief can be attained by isolating yourself away from society and sitting inside a monastery, a cave or a hilltop and meditating about God. Trust, on the other hand, can only be attained in interacting with society and proving your trustworthiness in all affairs and in all matters. Belief does not need society. Trust does need religion. And what Al-BM is asking us, who then are these Al-Muminun, the mm -hmm. believers? And this is the question he has. I'd love to hear your answer on this one as well. Mm -hmm. um, according to the standard Islamic narrative, Al Muminun are the believers and the believers in Islam. They are the Muslims, the first Muslims. And uh, I think Al BM is very right to point at, um, at this expression because it means something more. It does not mean only believers, but um, it is based on the um, on, on the um, on the root, which means trust. And Mu mean it's um, a participle is uh, those who have given trust. Those who are, who, in a sense, it means those who are faithful to something. But the, the phrase, the, the word mumin, does not tell um, what those believers, what those muminun are faithful to. So this is the question. Um, what are they faithful to? Are they faithful to Islam? Are they faithful to something else? And uh, what we saw, for example, in the coins, is that the, um, the Arab leaders um, describe themselves as being Amir, which means commander, of the Muminun, Amir al-Muminun. So they were the commanders of the Muminun, which could mean that the Muminun were their troops. They were the ones who were faithful to their Amir, to their commander. And this is um, a meaning which is very interesting because it reminds us how deeply ideological the, um, the first so-called Muslims were. They were, in fact, engaged with their leaders. They were engaged to their leaders, faithful to their leaders, in order to, um, to conquer the world. Mm -hmm. I think this is the real meaning of the word Mumin, but of course, this is not what the standard Islamic narrative wants us to believe. It wants us to believe that those were Muslims, the first Muslims. Is, isn't this another example of one that you have brought up before? I mean, this is what you're really good at, Odin. You're saying, and you're always reminding us, and I love the fact that you do this. You say, hold on a minute. Don't impose the meaning of the word from what is known today. So Muminun today is the standard is imposed, it has been created by the standard Islamic narrative to mean Muslims. So when you see Muminun today, don't assume that that's Muslims. It's like the same way we said earlier about the word Allah. Just because it's on a coin that says Allah, that does not mean it's a Muslim coin because Allah is the name of God that is used by all religions in Arab who speak Arabic. Mm -hmm. And the same token, uh, God, G-O-D in English, is used by all religions who speak English. So in the same way, Muminun in the 7th century, is what you're saying, in the 7th century, are those who are the followers of the Amirs, who are the leaders of that time. Much more to the, from, they are more than followers. They have given their faith, they are faithful to him. You okay, see, the faithful followers sort of, of the, the, the Amir the, is a sort of spiritual and political leader, and also war chief. And he is a war chief, and uh, he is a total war chief because he is both a political and a religious figure. Okay. And therefore, we always, 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 like we've always said, make sure if you're reading something, if it's a phrase, if it's a word, if it's a, if it's a testimony, stick it in the century that it's written, and then use that context to understand what it means. And this is good 
exegesis. Exegesis, by definition, demands that you go and understand what the author is saying. Don't mm. impose your own view on what the author is saying. That's called eisegesis. And that's exactly what you're doing here with the name Mumini. Mumini. Sorry, thanks so much. This has been very helpful. God bless you. Uh, and you're, you're very clear on this. And I think, I hope, I hope uh, LBM has, has been answered on that. Okay, this is Jay and Odin. Over and out. Mm.